Okay, so today I'm going to be walking through how to set up a turntable um, to render a video um, of a object which is rotating. And I'll be using the Quicksilver renderer, which is new to 3ds Max 2011, um, because it offers a very fast uh, render time. First thing I need to do is um, fix my references to the texture. Right now it's using um, ones on the a different drive, which, which isn't there right now. So if you're not aware of this little trick here, um, go over to Utilities, which is the little hammer, More and go into bitmap photometric paths and hit OK. Um, that'll, mine's already up so I don't need to hit OK. Um, then click on edit resources and uh, I'll make this a little bigger for you. And you get um, paths to all the things that, um, that are sort of external files. Uh, I'm only interested in these bottom five here so um, shift click to select all of those. Ellipsis, uh, browse to your path, use path, set path. And with a bit of luck that'll update in my viewport, there we are. So I'm looking at it nice and nice and well. If your um if your your model's not looking very good, um, a couple of things that you can try changing is um, views, show materials and viewport as. You can try standard display with maps, or quite often a little bit sharper, which, but sometimes broken is hardware display with maps. And I've got a feeling on mine it's it's a little buggy. So yeah, I get a weird kind of ghost car. I'm I'm not sure what that's all about. Um, perhaps you can see it a little better if I don't have all these damn edges on. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I've got a weird ghost car. Um, so that's that's just something to try, but it doesn't always work. Anyhow, um, so let's hit, hit F9 to do a quick render. Um, nothing particularly special, just default scanline render. Um, and let's try and improve that a little bit. So first thing I want to do is add a ground plane, and then I'll add some lights. Um, for my ground plane, I'm going to um, go to top view. I'm going to add a um, cylinder. I'm not going to use a, um, a square. Uh, just a regular plane. I'm going to use a cylinder. Um, you'll see why shortly. So, nice big cylinder. Um, that should be enough. Uh, fairly tall. Um, that should be fine. Lots of sides now. Because we're doing a render, we, we don't care how many sides we use. So, you know, I don't know. Let's go 50, not even 50. And let's head back to perspective. Uh, in fact, yeah. Um, now, edit the poly. Um, oh, I should have done that. I bet it's got too many height segments now, isn't it? Of course it has. Disc. All right, so front view. Um, I'll get rid of the, just the top ones there. And we don't want um, those top ones. We do want one side. Um, so I'll just pull that up um, a bunch. Uh, what am I doing here? I think my job hidden. Right, so pull that up. That should be fine. Um, back into perspective. Um, now I want to flip all of these um, so that they're facing towards the my van, and this will suddenly seem to make a little bit more sense now. Um, so select those faces, and we're looking for flip. There it is, flip. And switch back to front. Um, pick these edges, and then unpick those. Um, those are the ones that I want because I'd like to chamfer them. Any excuse? Eh? So uh, nice big amount. Using a very unsuitable scale in my scene, obviously. Um, let's try 20. And lots of segments. Again, it's a render, it doesn't doesn't matter that we're using a lot of triangles here. Not a problem. Um, oops, oh, I've gone lost them. There we go. And let's go back onto my vehicle. If um if you're not used to using the perspective viewport, I do encourage you to do it. Um, but a lot of people get kind of broken, feeling that they're like zooming into the wrong place, or maybe they're trying to zoom into their van from here and they're zooming in and they can't get stuck. Use um the Z key and it will um, recenter your, your pivot for your camera um, and zoom it appropriately. So Z key is good. It's also good for finding stuff. If you've selected something you're not sure where it is, hit Z and you should be able to find it. Okay, let's get rid of edge faces. Um, good. So uh, let's let's not use purple because that's a horrid color. Um, there we are, nice gray. And we also want to smooth all of those. Um, so select all of those and apply a smoothing group. And clear and hit one. That should be fine. Okay, so the benefit of that is it just means we've got an end to our scene, and it's not a um, not a horrid um, thick line which you sometimes get with a plane um, heading towards the horizon. Or people end up making these absolutely enormous planes just to to prevent the sort of problem of looking over the top of it, um, which is a little bit silly. Um, so without any lights, it looks a bit a bit funky. But as soon as we add some lights, it'll make a little bit more sense. Okay, first light we're going to use um, is the skylight. So over to standard, um, skylight, doesn't matter where you put it, um, 
doesn't make any difference because it, it affects the whole area. And I'm going to slide this down to I guess 0.3. We don't want it to be too strong. Um, one is is enough to pretty much light your whole scene. In fact, I'll put it on one. You can see how it looks. Um, so everything's pretty pretty bright, which we don't really need it to be. So let's try 0.3. See how we're looking. So it's it's kind of dark, but it lights everything evenly. So it's quite useful for um, for that. Let's um, add in another light now. Um, Mr. Area Omni or Mental Ray Area Omni. I like Mr. Gives it a little character. Um, you can see some nasty Z fighting there. Um, ignore that. And let's just put it to one side. Yeah, that should be nice. Um, we want the 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 objects in question to be fairly well lit. So we're going to have a roughly front lit. Um, render for our for our turntable. Um, so let's see how we're looking now. That's that's probably a little bit too bright, but um, I'll leave it up and we can have a render and see how it looks. Oh, it's not as, not as bright as I thought it might be. But you can see we're already getting into to twenty second frame renders, which is pretty pretty slow. Um, so let's now change our renderer. Um, so under rendering, render setup. Just like you might have changed it to uh, Mental Ray before now, um, it's the same place, so we just slide down to Assign Renderer, bring up the ellipsis, and this time we're going to choose Quicksilver Hardware Renderer. And we'll hit F9. And the first time might be a little bit slow, but it, it does kind of speed up in subsequent goes. Nope. Okay, so that first renderer took a little less time than our scanline, but um, our next one should be much faster. There we go. So we're down to now one second from our 30 seconds. So immediately over scanline, we're much better. Now, this isn't perfect. Um, I don't know why, but on my model, it seems to make a weird black seam. That's that's not cool, but um, yeah, it's it's a quick thing. Um, so you know, you're going to sacrifice some accuracy there. Um, in fact, I will actually change a couple of the parameters. If you go over to uh, renderer. Um, I quite like it with anti-aliasing, and it doesn't even cost too much in terms of the uh, the time to render the frame. Um, but one way to save quite a lot of time is actually to drop down the soft, soft shadows position, particularly if you're using lots of lights. So um, as far as I can tell, um, Quicksilver hardware renderer seems to make a horrible mess of the with shadows anyway, so dropping it down really doesn't make much of a difference. You know, you're going from bad to just as bad. Um, so now we should be very quick indeed. Um, I don't know what that was, it was like less than a second. It's showing up as a second, but it's it's fast. Um, so now let's set up the um, the rotation. Now there are a couple of ways to do this. Um, one way is to uh, use a camera and rotate the camera, and that has some advantages, but um, this way is kind of quick, so um, we'll go with this way, and that's to actually rotate the object itself. Um, that will of course mean that your light is in the exact same spot for the whole thing, which is kind of nice. I quite like it that way, but um, you, know, you may have your own personal preferences. So. Um, right now, my scale is at 400. Um, I forgot to reset it because um, this scene was actually set up for all this. Um, normally, it would be at, um, at 100. Um, the way to change that is to go into a time configuration. Um, and we click on rescale time and we just type in a higher number. Um, depending on how many frames a second you're going with um, will depend on how long your video is. So, right now, I'm using NTSC, which I guess is 30 frames a second. Um, which is a good amount. 30, 30 is a nice, comfortable amount to, to watch out. Any more than that is probably unnecessary, and less than that you tend to notice the frames as they go past, particularly if you've got a lot of movement, which um, we might have. So, yeah, 400 will be fine. And uh, we record from 0 to 400 uh, a single rotation of the object. Um, so to do that, um, the fastest way is just to, to jump into Auto Key. Um, slide along to 400. Now, do not rotate before you slide, otherwise it will be animating on that very first point, which we don't want. We only want it to actually animate at this time. Um, so with auto key on and your time at 400, perform a um, rotation. You can try and do a full one, but sometimes it makes a bit of a mess of it. Um, so I recommend you do less than a half one. You'll see why in a second. Um, and then untick auto key. Then let's bring up the uh, curve editor. And um, we can see that um, this 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 graph is what's trying to show us um, what's going on in our scene. If I am um, with auto key off, that's important. Um, if I use the the yellow bars, or you can even use the um, uh, let me show you that um, the the time scale slider here. You can see it rotating. Um, 
so let's bring that back up again this is the, the little button at the left here brings this graph up um, and you can see as um, I scrub from left to right um, the animation happens and this is this is it here our rotation um, this blue line here going from naught through to um, where is that 146 degrees and here's our scale on the left um, but we don't want 146 degrees we want uh, 360 um, so we want to uh, select our last point here and just type in um, 360 okay um, and obviously this has gone off the top of our scale. If we hold down shift and uh, scroll our mouse wheel we can change the, the scale of the axis and consequently zoom. Um, incidentally control and left click uh, and scroll wheel rather um, lets you, you move that way. You, know, you uh, pan the same way as you do in Max by holding down the middle mouse button and dragging. Okay so what's happening right now is it's kind of curving um, which if we, um, I'll untick to play, if we hit play you can um, this is really slow, which doesn't really help demonstrate my point. Um, but as it gets towards the end, it slows down a lot and uh, becomes very little barely moving here, barely moving before it starts again. Um, and that's because it's trying to be all dead smooth and clever, and we don't want it to be. We want it to be linear. Um, so select both of our points and uh, set tangents to linear, which is this button here. And that'll now go in a straight line. And should be much smoother. Okay, um, that's about it really, um, as far as the animation goes. Nothing too fancy, just a rotation. Um, so we just need to set up our renderer to take a video over all 400 frames. Now, if you go into common, um, normally you will be will have been using single, um, which just takes a single render. We're now going to be using active time segment 0 to 400. Um, because our 400th frame and our 0th frame are the same, um, and because we want to loop this, I, I'm actually going to go with range 0 to 399, um, which will just mean that when it loops through, um, the 400th frame will be the 0th frame, if, if you're with me. So they're both they're both at 0 degrees or 360 degrees. Um, so there's no point in having them both twice because you'd end up with a slight slowdown, barely noticeable. But um, one little trick before we um, before we're certain of what we're looking looking at is just uh, go for 32240 and go for every 10 frames. Um, and that'll just render very fast um, and oops um, it means if, if you get it wrong you'll find out sooner rather than later um, so this one shouldn't take long at all um, jump down to render output and we want to click on files yours will probably be blank click on files here um, save it all save it into your renders folder um, test vid for um, and choose AVI from the drop down, hit save. Um, it'll probably ask you what format to save it in. I don't know why it didn't ask me what format there. Um, but choose one. Uh, I guess it's I guess because I'd, I'd already chosen one. Um, I, don't know, I don't see any options button. It's not letting me choose. Oh well. Um, you can go with uncompressed, and if you go with uncompressed, then you can you can save it in a, a video editor like um, VLC has a conversion thing, which might suit your needs. Um, or you can choose one of the compression codecs that it has already. Okay, um, so with the that set up, we hit render, and away it goes. Now this is obviously very very fast because we're using a low resolution, um, and we're only doing every 10 frames. Um, but it'll give us an idea of, of how we're looking. Um, so let's jump over to. Uh, it's a bit small for you to see. Our, um, uh, no, I didn't put it in there at all. I put it in renders. Video. Okay, so really, really fast because um, we're in rendering every tenth frame. But you can see we're in about the right spot. It's about the right size. Um, so I'm happy to proceed with our, our final render on that. Uh, and even this isn't taking that long, but um, if we go to every one frame, and let's go for a nicer resolution like 800, 600, and hit render. Um, might ask you if you want to overwrite, um, that's fine. Okay, so I kind of cheated a little bit. I um, actually changed a couple of things. I dropped down the soft shadow precision down to 0.125, um, and I got this render time down to 3 minutes for 400 frames. Um, I guess the ones in the labs were a little, little bit more powerful computers than perhaps mine. I guess mine must be slow. Um, but let's see how that looks now.
Okay, so I mean, it's it's not absolutely perfect, but it's not a bad um, sort of preview of what you've what you've made. Um, and in a very short space of time, um, you can often find that um, renders for videos take much much longer than than just three minutes. Three minutes is pretty good. Um, so I hope you found this helpful.